Deep in the heart of Death Valley, at the doorstep of Sin City, there lies an off-road race course like no other. The BF Goodridge Tires Mint 400 is the biggest, baddest off-road race on the planet. It was started in 1968 in downtown Las Vegas, and within a few years began attracting racers and celebrities from around the world. Legends like Parnelli Jones, James Garner, Steve McQueen, Chuck Norris, and Ted Nugent all raced the Mint. The 400-mile marathon captured the imagination of journalists from every corner of the globe, including Hunter S. Thompson, who covered the race for his Rolling Stone article titled Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. Hunter joked that he would document the impossibly challenging contest on a Vincent Black Shadow motorcycle, giving birth to the idea of racing street motorcycles at the Mint. Nearly 50 years later, a group of ragtag rebels dubbed hooligans did just that. This is their story. I keep telling people like, they're like, oh, I could do this, I could do this. And I'm like, no, you should just show up, race the thing and you, you'll understand. It's really hard to describe. It's like riding a bull and it's for 160 miles and it's all day and it really kicks your ass. And then at the end, you're just like so stoked that you even went through that mentally, physically, everything. It's like every kind of game you could ever imagine. The word hooligan first appeared in British police records in 1894 for the name of a gang in London called the Hooligan Boys. Since then, it has been used to describe someone who is rough around the edges, a vandal or troublemaker. It was the perfect name for a new style of motorcycle racing that re-emerged a few years ago. A run what you brung, asphalt, club of friends racing cheap street bikes. Not professional, barely sanctioned. Just a group of motorheads with junk bikes that had 750cc or larger engines, stock frames, dirt track tires, and no front brakes. As hooligan racing grew in popularity around the US, professional racers and factories got involved, creating the hooligan class with more skilled racers and better equipment. Flash forward to 2019. Mint 400 owners Matt and Josh Martelli brought motorcycle racing back to the Mint after a 43-year hiatus. And Mark Atkins, AKA Rusty Butcher, competed in the race on a nearly stock Harley. He got his ass kicked, had the time of his life, and called the Martelli brothers about creating two hooligan enduro classes for 2020. The brothers agreed. And this year, they attracted nearly 20 entries, including Mikey Virus, Danger Dan, Doug Carlson, Arnie Wells, Mark Atkins, Justin Hurdle, Jason Clemens, Jake Pope, and the son of off-road legend Malcolm Smith, Alexander Smith. Hooligan Enduro Off-Road Racing was born. Harley Davidson stepped up to support the emerging Hooligan Enduro classes, paying to lower entry costs for all racers on Harleys. Motorcycles were an integral part of the Mint 400 from the first race in 1968 through 1976. Racers J.N. Roberts, Mike Patrick, Max Switzer, and Rolf Tiblin dominated those early years and finished first overall, hours ahead of the cars and trucks each year. And that was while starting and racing side by side with their four-wheel brethren on mostly stock 1970s motorcycles. Sadly, motorcycle racing at the Mint ended in 1976 because of skyrocketing insurance costs. However, 43 years later, the Mint 400 owners, the Martelli brothers, restored motorcycle racing to the famed race, and nearly 200 competitors showed up to battle. Bikes are a part of the DNA of off-road culture. I mean, when these guys started this race, they didn't have anything but street vehicles, sedans, jeeps, street bikes. 
and that's what they use to race. So that's exactly what hooligan racing is, is, you know, run what you brung. It's not factory teams or pros. It's just the regular guys out racing. For the 2020 Mint 400, Mark Atkins invited a band of misfits to come compete with him on Harleys. This group of gearheads and grease wrenchers were well versed in the hooligan racing ethos, but were they ready for the brutal Nevada desert? It's one thing to go flat out on some asphalt, but quite another to take on the roughest off-road race course in North America on a street bike. The boys had no idea what they were in for. Watching some of the younger dudes that are racing this class that haven't been exposed to desert racing in the past, learn how hard it is and how underappreciated it is. You know, a lot of them are used to racing flat track, which is takes a tremendous amount of skill, but it's over fairly quick. And this is very much more a marathon than a sprint. And, you know, the desert doesn't care who you are, how much money you have, how hot your girlfriend is, you know, how much time you spend on your bike or how much money you spend on your truck. The desert will always take you down. And so to see these guys go out and get punished is awesome. In the months and weeks leading up to the 2020 Mint 400, the hooligan racers each began to piece together their custom Harley bike builds in hopes of surviving the treacherous Las Vegas desert. Each racer had a slightly different strategy when it came to weight, power, suspension, and handling. Bill of Biltwell Industries pieced together his bike build from leftover parts meant to take on the Mexican 1000. So he had a leg up in terms of designing to deal with sandy washes, large rock sections, and big whoops. The Warrior Built team built a bike from the ground up to take combat wounded veterans out to race. Their organization helps combat wounded veterans assimilate back into civilian life. So for them, the strategy was to make their bike last as long as possible. Mikey Virus, meanwhile, who raced the Mint 400 for his first time in 2019 and became hooked, was back for more in his custom Harley. Mikey isn't exactly what you would call an athlete. There, I walk up to the podium as Mikey's pulling up on there and he just finished, and he looked like hell. Um, visor was cracked on his helmet, it was all scratched up. Uh, headlight was hanging off, the front fender was broken. He just looked like he just went through hell and back to get to that finish line. And um, I remember they interviewed him and he was like, are you gonna come back next year? And he just had the look on his face like he was not wanting anything in hell to show up again and do this. Jason Clements built his Harley from a $500 Sportster with minimal parts and upgrades in the true spirit of the hooligan class. He was determined to finish the race on as small a budget as possible. Meanwhile, on the opposite end of the spectrum, Mark did a full-on rally raid style build, complete with modified suspension and a custom front rally style fairing. His machine would have looked at home in Dakar, but instead he was surrounded by a mass of hooligans. The entire group of hooligan class racers came up with some of the most unique and ridiculous Frankenstein bike builds in the history of desert racing. There was plenty of smack talk happening and the energy heading into the race was awesome. Before the crew headed off to Las Vegas, Mark got them together for a test session so he could help share his knowledge and prepare them for the coming challenge. He explained that the goal was first to finish. Two laps at the Mint 400 meant 200 miles of off-road hell. Less than half of the racers who leave the start line ever make it to the end of the race. So that was goal number one. Okay, so we just got back to the shop right now from riding in the hills in Temecula. It was a little wet out there, and I'm sitting here with Alan from Warrior Built, and uh, he finished his bike, what, 20 minutes before you got here? Yeah, I loaded it on the trailer, <laughs> brought it over, and went out in the sand out there. How was the first test ride? Oh, it was good. I realized that uh, you guys make it look way easier than it actually is. I was dying. It's pretty brutal. I'm sweating like bike. a pig still. Yeah. 
So based on the riding you just did right now, where do you think your bike's gonna exceed the most? Uh, with me personally, probably not anywhere. I don't think I'm that good. <laughs> but <laughs> I think we're doing it as a team. So we got a bunch of combat veterans out there and they're gonna ride. So I think it's gonna be kind of brutal for them. So we'll see, but I think it'll do good. Um, as long as I'm going straight, a very kind of slow pace and very normal, maybe on the road, I'll do, I'll do all right. <laughs> <laughs> There's a couple of roads for sure. So you ready to be out there in the desert with us or what? Ah, yeah, I think as ready as I'll ever be. Wish so. you guys the best of luck. Thank you, man. Yep. Appreciate you guys inviting me out. So you just rode your bike right now. I did. Fresh motor, fresh front end, fresh shocks, fresh, pretty much the whole bike. Yeah. How'd it go? Uh, surprisingly well. So we put some different shocks on. Um, I've never tried a dirt bike front end on a Harley before, and uh, I was actually surprised how how good it was. You've been so anti that for years too. It's yeah. good to hear that. I've had that CR front end sitting around the shop for a couple years, and finally threw it on, got it lowered, got it set up. Need some tuning, but I was surprised. I you actually like it. Extremely fast out there today. We had like literally had like a red tape and the bull was just going through it the whole time. Like you were ripping, dude. It was the most fun I've had in a, in a while. <laughs> so the bike feel any better with that front end on it? Were the turns a little bit better or anything like that? It did. It actually turned and didn't push. It actually was hooking and railing ruts without blowing them out. And I was surprised. Yeah, it, had, it was a really hard time to try to keep up with you. And yeah. I just quit. Plus I got a 21 with a Shinko tire on it now. and. Uh, uh, that was a lot better than the 19 dual sport tire last year. Sticky and grippy. Yeah. So it sounds like the bike's ready, so you ready to race the mint? Uh, sure. Good luck getting <laughs> second place behind me, buddy. Bullshit. <laughs> okay, so that's a wrap. Ride day went decently well. I crashed only three times. Lost a few bolts, a couple of us broke some parts, but all in all, everything cross-sided pretty good and we are ready for the mint. We'll see you guys in Las Vegas and wish us luck. Each year, the Mint 400 holds the largest off-road festival of its kind on Fremont Street in downtown Las Vegas. The area is perfectly suited to hosting all 500 racers, including the 200 motorcycle racers who slowly push their vehicles down Fremont Street, surrounded by thousands of race fans. Racers hand out stickers and swag and sign autographs, and then go through a safety and technical inspection. Over 200 vendors show up each year, and the whole scene is an off-road spectacle. Right now we're at Fremont Street at the Off-Road Festival for the Mid 400, and I'm standing in front of a bunch of booths right now. So, pretty good turnout yeah. here. I am here to race a 500-pound Harley-Davidson, 160 miles in the desert, with a couple of my buddies. Great idea in theory, but tomorrow's going to be a long day. But we're really pretty excited to race the mint again. We took over the Hooligan Enduro thing, and I got as many people as I could sign up. Um, I think there's around 18 to 20 of us this year, so we got a full class. The goal is just to have as much fun as possible. I don't think any of us care what place we get. I mean, obviously, we all want to win, but at the end of the day, it's surviving the mid 400 on the Harley and having a story to tell for next year. First time racing? First time desert racing for sure. I've been racing hooligan flat tracks on a Sportster and yeah, no, this is the first time to race anything like this. I feel like I already won. I made it here. I'm on free mom in Vegas. My bike's done. I'm gonna get to the finish line. I made it through tech inspection. I'm winning already. I, I can't even believe they're gonna let me race this thing with everybody. So I had the, the guy who won it last year, Barry Noble. I had him on the show a couple weeks ago. And he's a pedal bike racer. He races mountain bikes. And that's what he trains. So really, after I had him on my show the past month, I've been pedaling a bicycle in the morning and then building the bike in the evening. My name is Doug Carlson. Uh, I'm here because you asked me to stand right here because the lighting's good. Right. But also, here for the Mint 400, it's the best shit to be a part of. Like, we're just happy to be here. Like, not to brag, but I was one of the first six people to race the mid 400 on a sporty last year. So like, you know, that's kind of what we're into. It's just about having a good time. Like, loud shit, gasoline fumes, it's fucking perfect. To be a part of the mid 400, like to show people that you can build, you can build something in your garage and be a part of the greatest off-road race in the world is like the coolest shit ever. I don't know, 
I think it was fun because it's so like tough, you know, like it's like not designed for it at all. And so that's like what makes it fun. It's, I just want to finish. I just want to make two full laps. That's it, that's the goal, yeah. just get through the finish line. Yep. How did you do last year? Uh, I made it uh, one lap, one full lap and then I had to get, I got pulled off the track at pit B because the cars were coming out. in the mint for 100 on a sports dirt because we like to torture ourselves I guess you know it's a, it was kind of a last minute build and even though I had a bunch of friends do it last year they kind of uh, kind of blazed the trail and it was just like yeah let's go do it man let's let's go see what it's all about yeah it is a brand new class I believe last year was just in a you know kind of a wide brush uh, vintage class and uh, this year um, Mark kind of uh, set up uh, this whole hooligan enduro thing to, to really see if I uh, could get some more uh, sign-ups and see if we could build the class out. I honestly have no idea what the course is like. I saw a bunch of it last year and footage and everything, but I think it's like, it's kind of sandy, it's in the washes, uh, there's some rocks and stuff out there, so it is pretty gnarly, it's pretty brutal. Um, and what it's gonna take to finish is gonna just, it's kind of gonna be mental. It's gonna be physical, you gotta hold on, but you kind of, got to just work through the grueling aspects of it that and a, a bike that stays together and stays working is uh, important as well we just passed tech inspection bikes all dialed in ready to rip so now we're just hanging out in the booth watching all the cool trucks go by and then uh, we race tomorrow so wish us luck On Friday, March 6th at 7 a.m., nearly 200 motorcycle racers lined up at the Mint 400 start line. The wait was now over. It was time to roll the throttle back and go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Mother Nature. Luckily for the hooligans, the weather was perfect for racing. 65 degrees and a light breeze. We made it. We're on the starting line right now. <laughs> I feel good. A lot better than last year. I'm ready, ready to go. I'm feeling all right. I don't know. I know what's ahead of me, so just see how it goes and survive, finish. I want to make two laps, two solid laps this year. That's my goal. I wouldn't be out here on anything else, so this is what I ride. This is what I ride in Reno. This is what I ride in Cal City. This is what I ride to work sometimes, so I fucking love it. Having fun and it's like just bringing the crowd, saying Harleys can't do anything except for ride on the street. Well, we take them to the dirt and have fun with them, so let's take them and go race them. All right, man, it's race time. Let's get it. A crowd of hardcore motorheads had gathered to watch the bikes rip off the start for just the tenth time in the mid's history. They cheered as row by row they rushed into turn one. There were two hooligan classes this year at the Mint. Hooligan Enduro, which was a relatively stock street bike and allowed multiple racers to share one bike. Past or present professional racers were not allowed, making the Hooligan Enduro class a place where beginners can shine. The Hooligan Open class allowed for more modification and professional racers with factory-backed teams. Race mile 15, the Hooligan Enduro racers were caught in a bottleneck coming over and through a new feature of the Mint course this year, dubbed Hard Rock Mountain. The thick boulders forced the racers to slow their pace as they had to carefully pick their way through the nasty rock trail. There's all these dirt bikes yard sold everywhere, and I'm like, what the hell is going on? I don't know why they were pulled over, and I'm like, 
Like on a Harley, you really have to pay attention going through rocks. It's like it's throwing your bars any which way you could ever imagine. And I'm like going up this hill, and like there's a dude on a Harley, and like my bike's already kind of hot going through this, so I'm just like trying not to slow down. And I get around this one dude, and I go up on top of this hill, and there's just like Harleys and dirt bikes yard sailed everywhere. And it's the crazy rock section. And um, I'm like, oh, I got this. This is, I, I'm really good in rock sections on Harley. So I'm cruising around, going around everyone. And all of a sudden I look and I look over to the right and I see this like, it's the road goes this way and I see this canyon. And then I'm like, don't look that way. And I looked over and as soon as you look, the bike just steers that way. And I fucking rode into the canyon, ate shit, fell off my bike. And I'm in like a ditch that's, I didn't think I was getting out of. Luckily, I figured it out. My bike wouldn't start at first and then it finally fired up and then I had a buddy of mine like kind of back me out of this area and then we like got it all the way up this thing and I was able to keep continuing but that rock section was pretty hairy on a Harley for sure and I'm fairly confident in those kind of sections and as soon as I dove down that hill into it, that's where I caught up to Mikey too. I was like the one spot I like caught up to the back of him after he already took off on me and then as soon as I ate shit he was gone. <laughs> Uh, Hard Rock Hill was my my favorite part of the whole course. So we didn't do that last year, so that was new. And I've been riding a lot of enduro riding lately, and uh, so that it was pretty pretty simple for me this time. There was a line of people on the right side. I picked a you know a couple step offs on the left side and just blew past a bunch of people right there. That that was my favorite part. It was pretty rough. There was a point where. I tried to go around a guy who had fallen. And I, the bike went off maybe a foot off the track, but if it kept going, it's a ravine. That thing's definitely not coming up a ravine. So I did everything to keep it and I actually dropped it and I think we have some footage of that somewhere, but um, it probably took me 20 minutes to push that bike back two feet over a ledge because it's so heavy and it was such a crazy angle. So my whole goal was not to drop it and I would do anything not to drop that bike. And so I dropped it the once and after that I managed to not drop it again. The mountain pass quickly developed into a war zone with downed riders everywhere being circled by helicopters like buzzards. Team Heat Wave's Justin Hurdle had an issue with a stuck throttle cable going up Hard Rock Mountain, but he was able to make some adjustments and keep going. How is it? Oh my god, it's so much crazier than this pass that we have to go over. It's so fucking rocky compared to what Doug had to ride to us through, I think. It was so insane. Sam broke his case on a rock. Sam what? He leaked all his transmission fluid out on a rock like fucking 15 miles out. He's fucking dead in the water. Sam is going zero. Yeah, he had dropped his bike over on like a hill. I helped him pick it up. Fucking, it's, it's so fucking gnarly. Meanwhile, up ahead at race mile 25, the lead racers were once again being tested. They had hit the Fox Proving Grounds, a section notorious for breaking race cars in half. Minutes later, Justin Hurdle stopped to check up on Rusty Butcher. Mark was leaking oil and was experiencing mechanical gremlins. 
not what the determined motorhead wanted to see halfway through lap one. Within a few more miles, Mark was forced to stop and concede defeat at race mile 42 due to mechanical failure, turning him from a racer to a spectator. Oh my god. Dude, I was fucking doing good. Yeah? Yeah, you fucking action, fucking were gone off the line. I was fucking like, Mikey's sending it, dude. Really? Any reception right here? Nice day for a race, huh? Where's the beer? <laughs> they ain't here. I know. I, I wanted to bring a beer just for this occasion. It's hundreds it's, of miles away at this point. Might as well be. Oh, this is difficult, but... We're 42 miles in. Yeah. <laughs> That's it? Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. Friend, so I was smashing through and um, my bike just kept getting louder and louder and then it was doing fine and then I hit the long, there's like, I don't know, 10, 15 mile like sand section and it was just getting crazier and deeper and deeper and deeper and the bike was just getting so damn hot that it just overheated. I probably melted a piston or something. I stopped and looked at the, the, the gauge on my bike. My bike was 330 degrees. So, I fried it. I broke down and I was trying to figure out what was going on. I was letting the bike cool down. I was doing all these things. And it literally took like 20 or 30 minutes for third place to catch me. And then he comes up to me and he's like, do you need help? I'm like, it is it is what it is. I'm done. I'm like, you're in, you're in second place now, like go. And he's like, what? And I'm like, yeah, go, like you're in second. Mikey's beyond ahead of us. Like you're in second, make sure you finish this race. And he's like pinned in. My bike was off and on and then I remember like, I was at the point of the sand section where it comes up and then you do this like right hander and it comes back downhill and I could see the next pit. So what I did was I got my bike started kind of running and I just took off and went through, cut the course and went through like this desert thing and landed back on the road and just tried to pin it as fast as I could before the bike turned off again. And I pinned it and it coasted all the way down the hill and I pushed it like another 100 feet to this photographer that towed me with this truck into the pit section and then I made it to that pit and then I just sat there and had some beers with some random dudes and hung out. <laughs> it was cool. I got to see a bunch of the Harleys coming in the pit and those dudes are just wrecked and they were just like fucking <laughs> told already. Bikes were already overheating and all this kind of crazy shit. Shit's falling off and just every pit and the Harley thing for the most part is like dudes like patching up something that happened for sure. Arnie Wells made a quick stop to get help with his radio before continuing on. Can you help me plug my radio in? I don't know. Oh, yeah. 69, you got a copy? Yeah, thanks, guys. What up, bro? Jason Clements, AKA Fast J of the Speed Merchant Team, stopped to make some quick repairs in the main pit at the end of lap one before returning to the course. Chris Calmanero of the Warrior Built Team also stopped to make some quick repairs in the main pit at the end of lap one and turned the bike over to teammate Ryan Wilkinson. I'm out here racing with a bunch of combat veterans for a foundation called the Warrior Built Foundation. So we were out here on a Harley Davidson trying to get out here and get through this course if we can. It performs really well until it doesn't. So it's kind of like a bike. It'll just throw you on the ground and if you have to pick it up, it's. It's kind of hellish, but until that point, it, I'm absolutely surprised at how well it did. It's a completely different course. I was, I thought I was getting this stuff real easy. It turns out it was, and it's miles and miles of whoops, and the whoops don't let up until you go straight up a mountain, and it was just bottlenecked, and people laying, it was just carnage. It was really brutal. Cyrus, meanwhile, continued to extend his lead, finding his rhythm through the brutal Mojave Desert. Behind him, it was a battle for second between Jason Clements and Arnie Wells. With a full lap to go, anything could happen. The second lap, I saw the helicopter and I was trying to show off, like I was trying to go through it faster than I should have been and I laid it down real quick, but yeah, that was a, that was a good spot. After two laps of hell and nearly six hours of battling, Mikey Virus out of Lakewood, California, crossed the finish line first, becoming the first ever Harley-Davidson Team Hooligan Enduro Champion. 
In only his second attempt at the Mint 400, Mikey dominated the field, leading the majority of the race. He was one of only two racers to complete a full two laps in the time allotted, and nearly half did not finish at all. Halfway through the second lap is when it kicked in, like, dude, we gotta push this. Gets a little mental, but just block it out and just keep going. And then next thing you know, you're, you're up here. <laughs> I, felt, I felt pretty good. There was a lot of times when I was out on the course where I just, I was getting my ass kicked, but I think uh, when I came through home pit, I was ready to go again. I was like, yeah, let's let's keep going, let's keep going. So it, it, while, it, while it did beat me up, I, I, was, I was ready to keep going. It's fucking gnarly, huh? It's like super gnarly. So I think next year, the mid 400 is probably going to have a whole lineup of uh, hooligans that are about to shred. So my boy Mikey Virus is um, first place in hooligan enduro. I'm so proud of him. He got second last year and he led all of last year too. So stoked for him. And um, dude, honestly, I'm I'm stoked. I'm in one piece. It sucks the bike broke, but you know, third time the charm next year, we'll get him. I uh, appreciate Har what Harley Davis has been doing for us, and you know giving us opportunities to race cool stuff like this. Motorcycles are vehicles of freedom, and nothing is more soul-stirring than riding a bike off-road. For the new breed of desert off-road hooligan racers, 2020 was a milestone. It would be forever remembered as the first year the hooligans slid off the pavement and into the Mojave Desert to battle it out at the great American off-road race. This whole Harley thing for me in the past seven years has been a weird thing. Because me, I just think I'm some dummy. And all I'm doing is being me and just trying to have fun but I'm also documenting me having fun. So it's turned into like me being the front man to a lot of like fun, stupid trends. And like, I, I remember I had the moment, I had my buddy, I'm like, take my photo on the line this year at the Mint. I said, take my photo, I'm standing there and there's like a line of Harleys behind me of dudes who just believed in what I said and showed up to race this race. And it was like a, the coolest feeling ever. And like, honestly, I don't really give a shit if I win or not, my goal, to win the Mint 400 was to have people show up. And that was my goal, to show the Mint and Harley that like, I can make this thing take off, you know? I feel like this Harley's kind of a punch in the face. Everyone everyone knows what they're gonna do and they're all dirt bike riders and then they jump on this 500 pound machine and, and really quickly get punched in the face. So I like to watch them come in and, and, and talk about how it was. And the Mint in itself is one of my favorite races and, and we do a lot of the different races down in Mexico and, and all around. Um, I like. The, there's kind of a, a nostalgia and, a, and, and a, an excitement around the Mint. I like the little parade at the beginning and, and just the whole thing, honestly. The start, the dead start at the beginning is kind of fun. Um, the Mint to me is just one of my favorites. It's in, you know, downtown Vegas. You can't beat that. So it's, it's just a lot of fun. It's kind of, it's laid back until the race and, and there's a lot of camaraderie with everyone. Um, the guys, everyone's really helpful. And, you know, I like the pit areas. It's the whole race, honestly, it's just a fun race. So it was bitching to see all these guys show up this year. Between the Hooligan Enduro and the Hooligan Open classes, we had like 20 guys. And it was rad to see on one end of the spectrum, you had Mark who built basically a bike that was almost good enough to compete in Dakar. The thing was bitching. It had every kind of bell and whistle you could imagine on it. Full suspension, the whole thing. On the other end of the spectrum, you had guys who bought $500 Sportsters and just threw a number plate on it and were literally bringing it to the race and you know, just hoping they would finish. I think hooligan racing at its core is really cool. And so we wanted to make a bridge from pavement hooligan racing to racing uh, Harleys in the desert. I mean, what's cooler than racing the Mint 400 on a Harley? Favorite part of the Mint would be the racing. Like I love Fremont, I love seeing everyone's bikes and hanging out with everyone, but I love racing. Like I like to be on the bike going. 
and that, that's just the best part for me. This year, I came into it like, I just wanted to make it all the way and not be dead. Like last year, I was dead. My bike was destroyed, crashed 20 plus times. This year, I was like, dude, don't crash. You know, save the bike, make it to the end. And it worked, like I only laid it down once and uh, I, had, I could go another loop probably. <laughs> but yeah, it was, a, it was a lot easier and smoother this year. You know, the desert loves to take your ego away. And then seeing a guy like Mikey Virus uh, rise to the top, man, he had what it, what it took. You know, he, he came last year, he was real close, but didn't quite get it. Barry got him, and uh, Mikey came back hard this year, and he, he showed that he could learn and he could evolve, and he's got what it takes to be a desert racer. So that's my favorite part of it, is watching these guys who have talent in other arenas tailor that talent to the desert. You think you're going fast and you're flying and then a set of whoops come up and it puts you in check real quick. I think the main thing that I would say for the message, and I, I try to get this in the guys that raced this last one, I'm like, come in this serious if you want to, but not serious as like you need to win. You, you need to be serious enough to where you know it's gonna kick your ass. So there's enough info out there, I think on the bikes and everything, people can figure it out tallest suspension you possibly can, good bars and a really comfy seat and that can get you out there. Very simple. Just the main thing you should be focused on is like enjoying this crazy adventure you're going to go on. It's going to be an adventure. You're going to get thrown in some bushes, you're going to eat shit in some sand and you're going to go in a rock section and it's going to suck and like you can go anywhere around here in practice or I mean just go ride anywhere. Go ride over a bunch of logs, go ride, like anything you can to figure out what it Harley does at 450 pounds off of weird terrain. And that's how, like, I've always ridden in the hills on Harleys. So it's helped me a lot, and I know what I'm doing, but just come in and have fun. That's the main thing. Focus on the fun. It doesn't matter what fucking place you get. It's not about winning, it's about surviving and then 400. And that sounds like a bad thing, but it's also the most fun thing ever. And I try to portray that as like, we're not here to race, we're here to survive, especially on a Harley. Again, they're 450 pounds of fun. So, earn it one mile at a time, and I guess one pound at a time. So we just left Mikey Viruses. Or oh, fuck. I'm trying to be funny. I put wheelie excited for the mint <laughs> on your photo. Really? Yeah. On the desert. On the street, they're awesome. So, by the end of this, my compressor doesn't go off every time. And when it does, it's definitely when my filmer hits film. Now, so many people supporting you. Have you been training so that you can try to, um, uh, you know, do well for them? Do what? Do well. <laughs> training? <laughs> no. No, I built the bike. Like that was the training. Like. I had heat waves and I lost them. I'm an idiot. No, it doesn't make you an idiot. It just makes you like a person who buys heat waves. <laughs> like they get lost. That's why, you know, that's the beauty of it. You can always buy more from heatwavevisual.com.